folks, welcome back to my channel. This is part two of my backyard garden tour. And we're also gonna be including bits and pieces of the front yard today, just to show you some of the updated plants and flowers that are in bloom. If you missed the first part, please tune in. I'll put the link at the very end of the video. So and I'll explain why I have to split the videos up in a bit, but in the meantime, be sure to watch part one. I don't want you to miss all the exciting blooms going on right now. My name is Dawn and I garden in zone 8B. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me in my garden today. And I hope you'll consider subscribing. And if you're returning, I'm so glad that you are back. I hope you guys enjoy today's tour. All right, stay tuned. It's really those long, long videos are so hard to edit. So it's just a lot easier for me to chop it into when I have so many video clips to put together. I, I just get, it, I, it's hard to stay organized. I'm, I always admire people who can put out those long videos because it is a lot of work to get those things edited um, and, and published. So, um, so anyways, let's go ahead and start here. I think I wanted to show you guys the proven winners, perfect storm in full bloom. Uh, look at this gorgeous display of flowers. And I'm so excited because they're the same thing. I think if I mentioned earlier, if you guys caught that, I wasn't sure if they were going to be the same plant. Um, I tend to buy things when they're not in bloom and I never know until it blooms if it's actually what I purchased. <laughs> so anyways, it is, and I'm super excited about it. The white flowers look incredible in front of the greenhouse. So, um, just back here highlighting these cute greenhouse baskets this year. Um, I think I showed you a close up a little bit earlier. So super, super cute. But this bed has um, been about a month now and uh, not much has changed. Um, just a few more blooms have opened up, but um, there's some purple skull cap that I have um, propagated from my other one along the wall there. This Wajilia is looking beautiful. It's put on a little bit of growth. Um, but other than that, it looks the same. The tick seed is opening up some blooms. My foxglove, not foxglove, um, phlox, looking beautiful. The germander does have a little bloom. I'll show that to you. Um, and then my Greg's mist, I, that is all transplanted from the other side of the yard. They were not getting enough sun where they were. So I cut them back and transplanted them that this spot I think they'll be a lot happier here. So um, I'm not expecting that much growth, but if I get it, that would be fantastic. The butterflies love the Greg's Mist, so. All right, so coming around and you will see the little girl I was talking about since she looks so cute next to the hydrangea. Love it. The pots are looking spectacular. The white petunias get moss back there. All right, we saw hyacinth bean vine. I'm so excited, and I see a little bitty bud that, look, a little flower has come out. Like an orchid. I don't know if you guys remember, but I sowed these seeds. These are from Baker's Creek. This is the, um, I think it's called Blue Eyed Vinca. But anyway, this is how I grow my Vinca. After I sow the seeds, I like to just plant them all over my yard and then fill them into my containers when my other things start to die. So I think uh, my petunias, probably don't have much life in them, but I just come over here and I grab one of my vincas and I can get them planted to replace my more, you know, I would consider my spring plant just because again, these, a lot of these petunias may survive, but a lot of them just crisp up. So did I highlight the creeping Jenny? It is starting to drape and looks so pretty. I've been trying to keep it 
trimmed so that they can all just kind of catch up and drape around the same time. All right, so all along the wall, I have um, white mist flower. It's a Texas native, I have four. And in between those, I have parsley, which I had originally planted um, or grew from seed. I sowed them direct sowed. And uh, really I did it to host butterflies, but they've turned out to be evergreens. And so I've been trimming them into cute little balls. So it's an added bonus that I now have parsley and they just look so cute, so. The mist flowers do not have any blooms yet. And then look, I have volunteer zinnias coming up. All right, let's see, any blooms? No blooms. All right, so I'm coming around the backside and this is sneezeweed, y'all. It's such a strange name for a native, but I don't know if I like it or not. I'm just not crazy about the color green. I think it very much looks like a weed. It's so easy to grow, so I'm on the fence about keeping it. Look at this beautiful salvia. This is Rhea. So this is an annual, and don't get me wrong, I love my perennial salvias, but sometimes the color out of these, per these annuals is so vivid and it lasts all season, and that's one of the benefit of the annual salvias, so. It's why I like to have them around my yard, but I do, again, I have tons of perennials, but insanely, insanely blue. So this bed is west facing and not much can take the Texas afternoon sun. This Texas sage here, I love it, but it's gonna get pretty big and I really don't want it growing out into the sidewalk, but I wouldn't mind it growing upwards to block the sun and heat on the windows. So I'm actually considering training them up into small trees. What do you guys think about that? And I just want to highlight my rose tree because it's doing so good. Uh, I don't know if you were able to tune into some of my previous videos earlier this spring, but the rose tree fell into the pool. You know, we had these crazy storms, typical Dallas, Texas storms, and my tree blew over and I woke up one morning and it was in my pool. It, I got, it, it weighed like, I don't know, it felt like like 300 pounds, right? Because it was full of water. So, um, so yeah, it was pretty devastating. Anyway, and one of my amazing subscribers suggested putting the um, support poles into the ground and it has worked because we've had some really, really bad storms and, and it has stayed put. Um, I previously had the support poles in the pot with the rose, so those just went down into the pool with it. So this is working and I am thrilled. And um, this rose is a beast and I, lost the tag and I don't remember what kind of rose it is. In the, so in the container I do want to highlight because everything in it lived as well. Let me come around and I've got some gorgeous scavoli that is draping down the side. Um, I just put some cascading vinca because I do think my petunia is going to conk out pretty soon. This one gets afternoon sun and those that get afternoon sun just tend to get crispy. So um, some coleus and then this vinca that I just have to keep trimming because you don't want your vinca rooting into the ground below, just FYI, because it will take over. But it is beautiful in pots. Over here, the pencils are looking fabulous. All right, let's go around to the few more of the containers. We have the Syncolias and Dichondra Falls. There's some blue evolvus and a creamy yellow petunia and the gorgeous, gorgeous deep pink hibiscus. We were able to overwinter this hibiscus last year in the greenhouse, so it's exciting to see it full of so many blooms. And I should mention, if my petunias start to look spent like these here, um, I do start to just place with heat-loving annuals. This is purslane, a cute little hot pink flower, or I add some cascading vinca. Then over here, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I love the peach Gerberas. I love Gerberas. I know. They keep blooming for me all summer long, so they are a winner in my garden. All right, and then this Rose of Sharon container is Super Tunia Vista Bubblegum. This one looks super, super healthy. Um, and along the side here, I did place some Cascading Vinca just in case and win this. Petunia conks out. And then I have some blue evolvus. 
and then the Rose of Sharon. This one that reseeds so pretty every year. All right, now let's come around here and look at my Autumn Joy sedums and then my more waterfall baskets. My pentas. We're heading to my container garden, but look how big they have got. Oh, I love it. Love it, love it, love it. And my mom got me this sweet little snail angel. And beautiful little pot there with the dragonflies. Isn't that sweet? It kind of, it kind of, your eye tends to focus up here and not all the little junk pieces I keep down there. I keep the strainer for the fountain, some neem oil, and just all kinds of interesting things. So hopefully this is doing its job up here. Do you guys do that? So I am back here in my container garden and it has developed so beautifully over the past month or so. And my roses look like they have a few blooms. So um, I'll go ahead and give you a few close-ups and um, it's such a serene area. Just all impatience growing. Uh, new guacamole hosta back there. A few hostas. And I'm trying things in the ground again. Um, if you're new to my channel, this space, uh, the mole loves to hang out back here. And this is why it became a container garden. We were not able to put anything into the ground that could live because the mole just had so much fun. Look y'all, my handy dandy pitchfork. I keep it here since this is Mr. Mole's territory. He loves to run along the porch right here. I think all the water from the pots he just kind of lives all up in here, so. So pretty. Um, they usually start puckering out pretty soon, and that's kind of when I start replacing them with some binkas. But um, I want to give you a close up, and this crepe myrtle has started peeling as it gets bigger, and the trunk is just spectacular. And so even if I'm not even admiring the blooms, the trunk is worth admiration in itself. You can see it has scale really, really bad. See that? Look at that. All up and down the trunk. I'm having a problem with all of my crepe myrtles. So I just get a brush with some Dawn dishwashing soap and just kind of brush and spray it. And it tends to um, help. It's just kind of a pain uh, because they, it just easily comes back. But Dragonwing begonia. Foxtail fern. And then this is another Japanese maple growing up into my crepe myrtle, my beautiful Natchez crepe myrtle. All right, and then moving around along this wall, we've got holly ferns that that's another staple in my Texas garden. They will grow where nothing else will and then my leopard plant. And then y'all look at my cute fountain. This was a gift from my kids for Mother's Day. My son picked it out. Is that so cute? So I'll have a show on this, putting this together. Along another Japanese maple in the corner. My Dr. Papel clematis is filling out beautifully and then it looks like I have some blooms up here in the corner. Okay and then coming around I have here uh, this is an Arabian jasmine. This was my great grandmother's plant and it is so fragrant it smells like a magnolia and gardenia combined. I can smell it all the way probably I am about four feet from it right now and I can smell it. It's heavenly. So my dad gave this to me about a month ago. Um, it's been passed down from my Aunt Bonnie to my dad and then to me. So she seems pretty happy where, she's be where she is. So I'm gonna let her stay put and just kind of spread out. But um, this is a transplanted hydrangea here. So it's just getting its 
root system established. Um, this is a double plate doozy. I cut it back, so I'm expecting a whole flush of new blooms. Dragon wing begonia with an impatient. All the impatients are under my beautiful blood good Japanese maple. Back behind this beautiful impatient is the Persian shield. So pretty. All right, and then the Valenta stream. Sorry, the sun has come out. It makes it a little bit harder, but gorgeous, gorgeous rose does like to snow in my fountain so yeah I just keep a stringer back here and clean it out every day sorry you guys have to see that but all right and down here there's some lemon thyme yummy and the smell is oh gosh it's divine I tend to drape over my little frog all right, Moonlight in Paris. She's got quite a few buds that are getting ready to open. Back here is Blue Skies Supertunia with some verbena. And then I've got the hyacinth vine. I'm training it all along the fence back here. And then down here is just a, an annual salvia mixed in with uh, pink scavoli. And again, just high as some vine all the way up. And then here's just another view of my Japanese maple. Sedums. All right, let's head to the front and see what's in bloom up there. All right, so I'm in my front. I just want to give a quick run through of some of the things or just update some of the plants since um, I, my tour, not much has changed since my last tour. So this is the Holy Grail. Again, look at the foliage. I mean, I can just grow this for the foliage, but this thing is incredible. The size of the blooms, guys, just wow. And then um, one of my little cone flowers survived and she's in bloom. So cute. This is Luna Rose back here. Pretty in its own right. The foliage is uneventful, but still very beautiful. And then the Mystic Spires. All right, here's another shot of the Mystic Spires looking gorgeous. And then I'm excited, my Agastaki, these are from seed, but I've been keep cutting them because again, I want a full plant and not necessarily just two stalks shooting upright. And it looks like they're putting on a few blooms. So they're delayed, but like, again, I'm okay with that. This is their first year, so I don't want to do much, but train a nice full plant. And then my Monrovia Rose is back into full bloom. Look at the sweet pink. Lots of blooms everywhere. And then moving my denim and lace was a success because it is blooming more than it has in years. So it was obviously just not getting enough sun under this oak. And now it gets full sun pretty much all day. All right, guys, and the showstopper is this Jolt Cherry Dianthus. This thing has been blooming since I planted it nonstop. Look at this. It is so vibrant and it's more of a deep fuchsia than a red, but it does again, it looks red. Homestead verbena, very pretty. So the same with this early flamingo phlox. This is still blooming. This has been blooming for, oh, I don't want, I want to say like eight weeks. So I have been deadheading it and 
as quickly as I deadhead it, it makes new shoots. Look at all the new shoots coming up. It's been a constant. So I do have Cleome. I know people say it's Cleome. So however you say it, uh, reseeding all over this garden. I'm so excited. So I have three right here. They just keep multiplying y'all. And I want my blue juniper to be more upright. So I am keeping it wrapped and I'll probably do that for the first year or so just to keep those branches in tight. Um, and if I have to prune it, I will do that, but I really want it to be more upright than to fall down or let the branches fall. I don't necessarily want it to take up a lot of width, so. And then my Midnight Masquerade Penstemon filling in. So again, you want to be patient with perennials. I'm going to give those guys about three years, but this Leatris is spectacular. I think this is the Proven Winners variety, Amazing Daisies. I just deadheaded them. You can see all the seed heads. Which were so cute on the plant, y'all. It just looked like little tiny balls of yellow. So I actually kind of had a hard time cutting them off, but I would like for them to come back and rebloom, and they may do that for me. And I also harvested a little bit of seed. Not that I have space for more. Look at my Lysianthus. It is such a beautiful flower. Gorgeous. And then the bluest blue of these scavoli flowers. I love scavoli. It's another annual that thrives in the heat. So they are filling out nicely, with, especially with the begonia. Looks is super pretty. And the begonia and ornamental kale mix is looking very pretty and neat. I love that. I don't know how the caterpillars have managed to stay away. I see a few of them have been eaten, but for the most part, they're still looking good. All right, and then coming around behind all of the begonias are these beautiful double orange sherbet daylilies. Filming on overcast days is just so much easier. So let me come around and then um, we've got lots of drainage projects going on, things that we probably should have done 20 years ago. So this is a new section for the drainage that we're having serious issues with in the front yard. And I've got a video, an episode that'll be coming out showing you how we got this done, but it does look fantastic. Coming around to so everything that's just in full bloom. And then I've got a couple of gold lantanas that replaced some petunias that were spent at my expense. The petunias were not the problem. The um, problem was all those terrible rains we had. This area, this bed drains forward and so there was just too much moisture on the roots of the petunias. Um, so I, when I dug them out, I added tons of expanded shell in there and hopefully that'll help um, keep the roots off of the lantana so they don't get root rot. And my white queen caladium showstopper. Look at that. Gorgeous, making a flower. And then look at the size of these wire caladium, so beautiful. So they're just on either side. And then the sweet little salvia spikes are growing up into the caladiums. I love that look. You know, the petunias, they struggle in the heat, but moisture is a big issue. So they love their roots to dry out in between waterings. And I think in this bed, they have a better chance because it's surrounded by tree roots. There's a big holly here and a big magnolia here. So in the other bed, they tend to sit more in the water, which is not good for petunias. Um, and so, yeah, I am constantly working on that, but that's why I think I see more success on this side. And also these just get uh, morning sun and maybe a little bit of afternoon, but the ones in the back get full afternoon sun. Then so that's a big struggle here in Texas. That afternoon sun can be super, super harsh. And then over here is my limelight standard. It is so beautiful and the blooms are just getting bigger each day. But um, I put it in a pot this year. They 
tend to struggle here, the heat in the summer, they get pretty crispy and ugly. So I feel like I can control its environment a little bit more if it's in the pot. I can uh, get it out of sight if it gets to be too hideous. But um, yeah, I can also just control the moisture levels. And since hydrangeas like to have um, lots of moisture, the moles tend to love them. And so if I have hydrangeas in the ground and they're getting a little bit more water, the moles love to get into those roots and those areas because it gets the earthworm stirring. And that's why moles love to be there. So, um, so yeah, I might have more success this year. And right off my driveway, I have Texas rock rose. It's kind of reseeded all over my rock garden over here. This bed stays pretty dry and gets full sun. So I have a lot of Texas natives here. This is Salvia gregi. It's a bicolor salvia. And then some amazing Artemisia. I'm just kind of wanting it to fill out. There's a dead tree right there, so it's hard to plant anything. But these should get and spread in this entire thing. And then that's a purple fountain grass. That, and I overwintered that in the greenhouse. So brought it back and gave it new life. So this is the other area of drainage in our yard. We had to make this one bigger. So we made it, we extended it wider and deeper um, when we installed the other one, which is right up there. So we just moved it further out here into the bed and then further out or further under the magnolia, I should say, right there. So now it's pretty, pretty wide. I wanted to just take you around this way and show you how pretty all of the colors are looking from this angle. And then the white crepe myrtles in bloom. I realized that I was supposed to show you my zinnia bouquet, some of the zinnias that I harvested. So all this is, most of these are the, well, actually all of them are the florets. Um, there's some liatris in here. And then all of this celosia is the spun sugar. Look how cute it is. See all the, I love it for the spiller. Isn't that gorgeous, y'all? And then before I filmed this, look what I did. Y'all be so proud of me. I went and snipped a coneflower. <laughs> So anyways, let me just keep showing you these beautiful zinnias. Here's a little bit of the lesser cat mint, so dainty. But look at the creamy peachy tones. Oh my gosh, they're so beautiful, y'all. All right, and that is it all the way around. I think I've shown all of them to you. So anyway, stunning bouquet. This is one of the reasons I love to garden is to be able to make arrangements like this any day that I want. Did I show y'all this one and then this one? Okay, I'm done now. Oh, and then look, a second coneflower. I did it, two coneflower. Y'all proud of me? Since my first video, a few of my sunflowers have opened up. So this is the Pro White series from Johnny Seeds. So beautiful. Also, this amazing candle lily has opened up. So I just want to show y'all the orange. I know a lot of people don't like orange in their garden, but I think it's amazing. Again, I am not growing it for the flower because the foliage is a show. It's a real reason. And same for this one. So this is a different variety. I guess I thought it was the same when I picked it up. more of a yellow bloom and this is twilight beautiful blooms all over it i'm gonna put the link to part one right here so be sure to watch all right guys we'll finish with my favorite view and i just want to say thank you for visiting and hanging out with me today in my garden if you like the video give it a thumbs up and again i hope you'll subscribe it definitely helps my channel grow and i would appreciate that so very much Anyways, you guys have a great day. See you in the next one. Bye.